Hello, this week, um, in uh, week 24 of our trek through Acts, we looked at the founding of the Philippian church in Acts 16. And so I thought today, uh, this week's patron video, I would look at the Philippian church. What do we know about the Philippian church uh, from the New Testament? We know a little bit, and we especially have a letter. Philippians is my favorite book in the entire Bible. Of course, I love them all. Let's go on the record as saying that. But I really like Philippians. Philippians is uh, one of the memory verse capitals of the Bible. Just seems like you're running into a verse that, ooh, I should memorize that on every page of uh, Philippians. Four chapters, of course, and they're all gold. Philippians is great. They're all great. I'm going the record. But I, So I thought I'd kind of sum up everything uh, in the New Testament uh, that I can think of. There's probably more. But everything in the New Testament I can think of that relates to the Philippian church. So on your mark, get set, go. The Philippian church. So it was founded about uh, AD 50. So this is near the beginning of Paul's missionary journey. We know that Paul was in Corinth, you know, basically from 50 to 52. And so Paul, uh, again, just assuming that the chronology of Acts is, is uh, basically the, the historical chronology, uh, Philippians would have to be founded before um, Paul went to Corinth. So that would put the founding of the Corinthian church about AD 50. Uh, it's on Paul's second missionary journey in Acts. Of course, Paul has been a Christian for about 17 years by now. So he's he's not a young Christian anymore, at least not by my uh, reckoning, by when he founds uh, uh, the Jerusalem church. Uh, in fact, he's probably about 50 years old. That would be my guess, that Paul's probably about 50 years old uh, when he founds uh, the Philippian church. That's funny. He's, he's uh, uh, maybe even a little younger than me. Um, I just turned 52 this week. Yay. So, I mean, that's funny to think that Paul's about my age when he's founding the Philippian church, maybe a little younger. Um, Philippi was a Roman colony, as we said in our video this week. That means that if you were a citizen of the city of Philippi, you were a citizen of the city of Rome. You were a Roman citizen if you were a Philippian citizen. Not everybody in the city would have been a citizen of Philippi. In fact, I doubt uh, that most even in the Church of Philippi were, although it's possible, never know. Um, uh, what else should we say here? Um, named after, I believe, Philip of Macedon, uh, who was the father of Alexander the Great. Of course, there was a famous battle between Augustus, who's called Octavian then, and uh, Brutus and Cassius, who participated in the murder of Julius Caesar. Uh, 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 Octavian beat, uh, Octavian and Mark Antony beat Brutus and Cassius at Philippi, or just outside uh, the Battle of Philippi in, I think, 42 BC. Uh, Caesar was killed in 44 BC. Uh, there is this comment in Philippians uh, about our citizenship being in heaven. I believe it's at the end of Philippians 3. Uh, that would have had special significance uh, to somebody who was in the church at Philippi. Uh, although I do kind of wonder if Paul is thinking more about Jerusalem than he is actually Rome. It would have had a double, kind of a do double service. Our citizenship is in heaven means that we're not Roman citizens primarily, and we're not even citizens of, of, uh, of the Jewish uh, people uh, in a way, although there wasn't citizenship in Jerusalem, really, uh, I don't believe. So, um, okay, so there, there's some a rundown. Uh, a lot of a lot of Philippi was founded by former uh, military people. Um, it's a good deal. Uh, if you came from nothing, be in the military, and if you survive, you get land. Often, okay. So Roman Roman colony, uh, important place, a, a chief city of that part of Macedonia, as Acts says. So who's who's on the journey? Certainly Paul and Timothy is a co-writer, right? So Paul and Timothy. Silas is there, according to uh, the book of Acts, and uh, that's interesting. Interesting. Oh, no, 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 that's not interesting. Silas is not with Paul by the time he writes Philippians. Silas was with Paul at this time, but Silas was probably not with Paul uh, when Paul wrote Philippians. Maybe. Um, Titus, I assume, is with them because he's one of the co-workers of Paul, uh, not mentioned in Philippians, uh, not mentioned in Acts, interestingly. 
and of course, Luke, whoever Luke is. Uh, if it's Luke, um, the beloved physician, um, or whoever the author of Acts is, the impression we get is that the author of Acts is with Paul in Philippi, in fact, will remain in Philippi uh, for the remainder of Paul's second and almost all of his third missionary journey. Um, so um, Luke remains at Philippi uh, from about uh, 50 uh, until Paul swings back around in about 57. Uh, so he's there for a while. That might explain why the church loves Paul so much. That's one of the things about um, uh, about Philip. The Philippian church seems to have had, uh, of, of all the, the relationships we know, the Philippian church seems to have had the, the most consistently good relationship uh, with Paul. It, it, Corinth is rocky. Uh, Gal Galatians is rocky. Ephesus is rocky, it seems. Um, Antioch was rocky. Uh, I, I, I'm just guessing Tarsus was rocky, although Paul doesn't tell us about it. Um, but Philippian church seems to have a consistently good relationship with Paul. So who was in the church? Well, according to Acts, Lydia and her family, uh, Paul stays with her. Um, now she's a she's a merchant, and so we don't know if she's if she was still uh, in Philippi when Paul wrote Philippians. She's not mentioned. Um, you know, you'd kind of think, wouldn't Lydia be mentioned? Uh, so it's possible that she's moved on uh, by the time Paul writes Philippians. Uh, the jailer, the Philippian jailer, becomes a Christian, and his family uh, could he be Epaphroditus? Could he be Clement? He could be Clement. Um, that's interesting to think uh, that the Philippian jailer could be uh, one of the two men mentioned uh, in uh, the book of uh, Philippians. Could be Epaphroditus, could be uh, Clement. Uh, interesting thought. Um, okay, so here are the four people um, at Phil from Philippi mentioned in Philippians. Epaphroditus, who seems to be, I'm, I'm wondering if he's a, a, a deacon of the church. Um, I've suggested uh, elsewhere that I wonder if uh, in the structure of most ancient churches of, of this time, that the elders were old people, you know, older, wise guys, and maybe women, we don't know for sure that it wasn't women, um, wise men and women uh, who led that community, maybe the whole, uh, you know, if there are multiple house churches, they would lead all of the house churches, so you wouldn't necessarily have a, a board of elders for every church house church, but you might have a group of elders for all the Christians in the city. Um, and then, uh, so they would be the ones who would give wisdom. Uh, and then the deacons might be the ones that actually did the ministry. Um, so, so I wonder if Epaphroditus could be a deacon of the church of Philippi. Yodi and Sintiki are mentioned. Uh, these are two women workers in the church. And Philippians doesn't say, oh, they just work with the children. Philippians doesn't say, oh, they just worked with the women. Um, so uh, they are co-workers of Paul uh, at Philippi. And then someone named Clement is mentioned. Is this the Clement of Rome, who would be the third bishop, third bishop of Rome after Peter and some other guy I don't remember? Um, probably not. Um, hard to tell. Um, there are lots of people named Clement. Okay, so... Uh, there you have, uh, I, I'd rather, I, I'd be more likely to think of Clement as the jailer, but um, okay, could be the, Epaphroditus could be the jailer. So patronage, one of the things that is really interesting about the Philippian church is that they, as far as we know, more than any other church, the Philippian church supported Paul materially. Now, Paul worked with his own hands. He built tents or whatever things out of leather you know, in the marketplace, he found it as a, maybe an evangelistic tool. I'll hear, I'll make your tent while I tell you about the good news. Um, but uh, Paul did not generally take patronage from the church he was actually at, because that would have created strings of obligation. Even in the book of Philippians, Paul is careful to defray any obligation. He says, uh, you all are, are fulfilling your obligation to God by helping me. I don't actually need your help. My God will supply all my needs. I don't have to have your help, but I'm very thankful for it. And you are fulfilling your obligation to God. So, so you know, there are no strings on me. Um, so, but the Philippian church did support Paul when he was at Thessalonica. Uh, Philippians 4.16 suggests he did this more than once, which suggests to us that Paul probably was in Thessalonica, 
Thessalonica a little bit more than two weeks, um, probably a little bit more like a couple months. Uh, but um, the Philippian church supported him Thessalonica. I just have to wonder uh, if when Paul says he, he got help from his friends in Macedonia while he was at Corinth, in 2 Corinthians eleven nine, 9, I have to think this probably is another re reference to the Philippian church uh, helping him out. And of course, uh, the Philippian church s sent help to him when he was in jail during the writing of Philippians. They sent Epaphroditus with a care package because, of course, in jail, there was no cafeteria. You needed outside help to, to bring food to you, you know. Um, and so uh, I, I personally uh, lean toward Ephesus being the place uh, where Paul was imprisoned when he wrote uh, Philippians. Uh, for one thing, when, when Paul uh, is headed to Rome, he's looking to go to Spain. He's not looking to go back to the churches around the Aegean there. Um, and also the, the back and forth between, between Epaphroditus and uh, between Ephesus and Philippi would make a whole lot more uh, sense. It would be a whole, whole lot easier than with Rome. And we know there's several back and forth. News reached um, Philippi that Paul was in prison. Epaphroditus came with a care package. Epaphroditus got sick. News got back to Philippi that Epaphroditus was sick. News got back to Paul that they were worried about Epaphroditus. Paul writes, um, you know, so uh, certainly that could happen at Rome. Uh, but um, I wonder if, uh, and of course, if Philippians was written from Ephesus, that would date it to around 57, 58. Um, so that would be um, um, some time after uh, Paul had, had been there to found the church. Well, could also be Rome. The traditional location for Philippians is, of course, uh, Rome. Um, but anyway, uh, so the letter. Um, the, le the letter um, of, to the Philippians suggests that the church was led by elders. Again, these are older people. Uh, mostly men, could have been some women. Lydia, you know, can, can totally see Lydia on the board of elders or the group of elders. Uh, sounds like it was structured like the synagogue. Um, and again, I think it would be for the whole city of Philippi, um, of which there would probably be several house churches. Uh, and then there were deacons, servants, ministers, uh, people probably like Epaphroditus who did ministry. So these aren't people who uh, repair the roof necessarily. These are people who do ministry stuff. Um, uh, again, I've already mentioned that Paul seems to have had a great relationship with the church at Philippi, seems to be, and the number one relationship Paul had with his churches was with the Philippians. And lastly, Paul may have written more than one letter to them. Polycarp, writing about 140, uh, mentions letters that Paul sent to uh, Philippi. Of course, there's some scholars who think that uh, Philippians 3 gives us a part of one of those other letters. Philippians 3, where Paul kind of gives his resume, it just kind of, it, it, it doesn't seem to fit real well with the train of thought. And so some have suggested that it might be an excerpt from one of the other letters Paul sent, maybe about the same time that he was writing the Galatians, uh, and he wanted to head off at the pass any Judaizers who would go uh, to Philippi. Um, we don't know for sure. Plenty of room for scholars to keep jobs uh, spinning out hypotheses. Well, I can't really think of any other information we have about the Church of Philippi, um, and so I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, but if you know of any other stuff I've missed, be sure to post it uh, somewhere, either on Patreon or on YouTube. Um, we'll see you next week with Week 27 and Acts 17.